Carpenter X. Welcome again to another Carpenter Examples tutorial. Here we have a reinforced concrete beam that we are going to analyze using Comsol Multiphysics. We are going to demonstrate how to incorporate steel reinforcement that is much smaller than the geometrical dimensions of the concrete structure. Rather than using a 3D solid, we'll use the truss interface within the solid mechanics interface. The reason why we are going to do this is that the 3D solid interface takes a very long computation time. And we will run four computations. The first one is about the elastic beam without rebars. The second one is the elastic beam with elastoplastic rebars. The third one is at the same model for the concrete and elastoplastic rebars. And our final computation will be the Mesa's damage model for the concrete and elastoplastic rebars. Our model consists of a 4 meters long beam and the width is 30 centimeters and we have a height of 20 centimeters. The peak load is 50 kilonewtons per meter square and this corresponds to a line load of 15 kilonewtons meters. The beam is simply supported and it consists of six 10 millimeters in diameter steel bars. Here is our Artisan model and its parameters. And the Mesa's damage model. This is important because it accounts for the characteristics of concrete in both tension and compression, where it can describe tensile cracking and the typical stress strain curve of concrete in compression. Our equivalent strain is defined using the modify Mesa's option within COMSOL. The tensile behavior of concrete is controlled by tensile damage evolution law, and the default for that in COMSOL is exponential softening. We also have a tensile strength that we we'll set to 2 megapascals and the uh, factor energy we'll use 220 joules per meter square for the compressive behavior of the concrete we'll use a default value in COMSOL which is the Mesa's damage evolution function this function can describe the highly nonlinear stress strain curve of concrete in compression. Let's jump over to Comsol Multiphysics and get this done. Let's begin by navigating to the model wizard. And we are going to select 3D for the space dimension. Then we are going to navigate down to structural mechanics. And we're going to select solid mechanics. We're going to add that. And we are also going to add a truss. And let's click on study. And under general studies, we're going to choose stationary. Then click on done. After you select stationary, now let's add our global definition parameters. So on the global definitions, let's click on parameters, and we are going to load from file. So we click here and navigate to where you have your text file that you downloaded. 
me open it. And that way we import all of our parameters. Let's expand our parameters a little bit. It's always important to remember the names of your parameters because you're going to use them further in the study and have an idea what the expressions are. Now let's create our geometry. So let's click on geometry. Let's right click on geometry and let's select block. And now we are going to enter some of our parameters. So for the width, let's enter length over two. And you can copy this. Well, actually, let's enter the width, which is width over two. And height for height is just height. Okay, now let's copy the length. You can just select it, right click, copy, or you can use Ctrl C on the keyboard. And let's navigate to the geometry toolbar and let's go over to more primitives and let's select a line segment. Make us a bit smaller. For our starting point where we have specified, let's change that to coordinates and we'll do the same for our endpoint coordinates and for the the x in our endpoint let's paste our length over to that copied and for the, the y in the starting point let's enter an expression and for the, the end point we will enter the save thing for the y the save expression and now for the, the c let's enter another expression for both the z in the starting point and the end point. Well, we have selections for our selections of resulting entities. Let's go down to cumulative selection and let's click on new and let's call this bars underscore in half. We will need to see our bars when we create them. So let's go to wireframe and let's take off the grid. And let's pan this by using the right mouse button to your right and then use the middle mouse button to zoom in and the left mouse button and just hold it and then you rotate it in a direction where you will be able to see the, the bars properly because we are going to create the bars now. In our geometry toolbar, let's navigate to transforms and select array. And for the input objects, let's select our bars underscore in half and for the the y the y y size let's enter this expression and 
and for the displacement let's enter this expression that's for the y as well okay now let's create another line segment so let's go back to more primitives let's create another line segment And uh, let's change the, the starting point and the end point from vertex to coordinates. Let's do that for both. And for the x in the end point, it should be the same length over 2. So here, end point, x, length over 2, our length divided by 2. And for the starting point, Z for both starting points and ending points. Let's enter this expression. That's for the Z. And for the cumulative selection, let's call this bars underscore midplane. So result resulting resulting object selection. Leave this open and Go to cumulative selection new and have paste or you can type your your name and click OK. And now let's create another array. We are still within our geometry toolbar, so let's navigate to transforms array. Okay, and let's select our object so go to the selection list and let's select the first array and click add let's go back to our model builder and for the z the z size here have z the size bars underscore layers and for the displacement the z will be layer underscore spacing you can enter these values now let's mirror mirror our bars so let's go to transforms this time we select mirror and let's go to selection list and let's select array 2 Therefore, we will select the six bars and let's click add. Go back to our model builder. And for the, the Z, so where we have point on plane reflection, for the Z, let's enter height divided by two or height over two. And let's select keep input objects and let's select build all objects okay we have an extra bar here we'll remove that using a program and rearrange these geometry before we do that let's go down to form union action under action let's select form and assembly and let's clear create pairs so let's clear that box bars in the symmetry plane must be created only in case of odd number of bars so let's add an if condition to the creation of the first bar so let's select line segment two. Okay, click in your. If you have this selected and you want to deselect it, you can click in your graphics window and enter Control D on your keyboard. That way, you will deselect anything that you selected. Now, let's navigate to programming. So geometry, programming. Remember to select line segment two. And where we have add before selected, let's add an if. And for the condition, let's enter the, this equation. 
okay now let's not get back to programming and let's go down to add after selected and let's select end if okay now let's do some rearrangement here so firstly we have block line segment array one then we have our programming if so let's click on the line segment number two drag it between programming if and end if okay and after the end if we should get array two and then mirror and now let's click on bail all objects now we can see that our bars are updated nicely we don't have the the one that was lying on the outer face of our concrete beam let's go and create some definitions let's navigate to definitions toolbar and uh, let's select the union and for the union for the name let's call it bars and let's select edge so for the geometric entity level let's select edge and then for selections to add let's click on this add button and let's select both bars underscore in half and bars underscore mid plane let's click ok and we are still in our definitions toolbar let's navigate to non-local couplings and let's add an integration and for the, the label let's call it deflection and for the, the geometric entity level let's choose point and for the point we need this edge you can come here and select this edge got that six or you can come to the selection list and select six and then click add but because it's a simple geometry it's easy to select a point okay navigate down to advance and where we have our frame let's select material xyz and now let's navigate back to our definitions toolbar and select explicit so for our definitions we should have in our selections we should have bars and if we click bars in half we turn red and then bars in plain should go to the default look and explicit remains as default and now we'll go down and set up our physics now let's add our material model to the solid mechanics so let's minimize definition let's minimize our geometry and where we have solid mechanics or physics let's select linear elastic material and let's go to our physics toolbar and under attributes let's choose concrete let's go down to concrete model so we have concrete model concrete criterion let's change this to artisan now let's add symmetry so in our physics toolbar we need to go to boundaries and let's choose symmetry so more 
constraints let's select symmetry and for the boundaries let's go to selection list and let's select two use control on the keyboard and select six as well add go back to your model builder and let's add a rigid connect connector so we are still in our physics toolbar let's choose boundaries and let's go down to solid mechanics we have boundary load we don't need a boundary load as yet connections rigid connector and for the rigid connector we need to choose boundary ones selection select one add for the builder and now we need to make some changes to our rigid connector so let's go down to prescribe displacement at center of rotation here prescribe displacement as at center of rotation and let's check the y and the z and also for the prescribed rotation where you have by let's change that from free to constrained rotation and let's select the x constrained rotation around x let's select that and constrained rotation around z let's select that as well now let's go back to our physics toolbar where we have boundaries and let's apply our boundary load and the domain will be four well we have manual we don't we don't need domain let's leave it as at manual and we can choose four here or you can go to your selection list and select it and then click add here but the geometry is pretty pretty simple so we can just select it in our model graphics let's make some changes to the, the force so the x remains the y remains and for the z let's type load okay now if you go to your your model builder okay and you come down to show more options here you have physics you have study you have results general etc there are options that you can select so that they will show up here so for this one let's make sure we have equation contributions selected and also let's select advanced physics options okay so let's show those two for now and click ok now let's make some changes I'll manipulate our physics even more so so we are still in the physics toolbar where we have global let's add a global equation and let's input load here and let's input this equation so let's input our equation here let me make this a bit bigger so you can see okay and now let's go down to our units so let's scroll down to the bottom and you have units here you can expand it and where you have dependent variable quantity let's select this select dependent variable quantity and here let's type face and click this little filter here and let's go down to solid mechanics and let's select load 
base load Newton meter square. Okay. And we are going to do similar for the source thumb quantity. So click here, select source thumb quantity, and let's type DIS, short for displacement. Click the filter, and under general, yeah, displacement, select that and click OK. With that done, let's go ahead and manipulate our truss physics. Okay. We can do this by navigating down to truss. So let's minimize the, our solid mechanics. And here, let's click on trust. And let's go to selection where you have all edges. Let's change that to bars because remember we use the trust physics to model our bars as mentioned in our introduction. Now let's change the discretization for the trust elements to match the solid. So let's expand discretization right here and let's change it the displacement let's change that from linear to quadratic let's navigate to our model builder and let's click on linear elastic material one let's navigate to our physics toolbar on the attributes let's select plasticity and let's manipulate the cross section data. The bars in the midplane should only use half of the true error. So, therefore, let's go to our model builder. And here we have cross section data one. Let's select that. And in the cross section data, so expand that. Let's import this expression a bit long but you can pause the video here and import that equation and we also need to make some changes to the straight edge constraint we we don't need that okay so for the straight straight edge constraint let's right click on that and disable The reason why we disable that is because the bar displacements will be prescribed by if multi-physics coupling. Okay. So let's go ahead and in our physics here, our just physics, below that we have a multi-physics here. So let's select this. Let's right click and select embedded reinforcement. Let's here we, we have selection all domains. Let's choose bars underscore in half. Now we don't need this here. So let's take that back to the default and here where we have edge selection embedded structure let's change that to bars in half actually our default was all domains so domain selection solid that should be all domains okay and here the selection should be bars underscore in half and let's go ahead and add our materials. Let's go to our model builder. Let's right click on materials and let's select add materials from library. And let's go to built in, let's shut down built in. 
and let's go down to concrete click on concrete and here you have you have add to components select that also let's scroll down and let's look for structural steel select that as well and add to component now we add those two we can close this right here Now let's manipulate our concrete. So let's go to our concrete in our model builder and the materials. Let's select concrete and let's make some changes to the value. Well, not changes. We're going to add some values. And here should be 1.3. This should be. 3.2 and for the size factor that should be 11.8 and shape factor that should be 0 0.98 okay so you can enter these values five of them one two three four five yes five of them this one this one this one this one and this one okay so you can add those values and let's also manipulate our structural steel so click on structural steel and let's go to the geometric entity level and let's change the selection to bars so we should have the option to choose bars here Okay, the reason why we don't have the option to choose bars, we need to go to our domain and select edge. And now if we come to our selection, we will have bars and our bars are selected. And for the initial yield stress, that should be 100 megapascal. Make sure it's in um, square brackets. And for the isotropic tangent modulus, that should be 20 gigapascal. Pay attention to your, your case. When you enter in megapascal and gigapascal, make sure they are in square brackets. And now, with that done, let's just go back to concrete to double check. Yes, it's okay. Ignore these, they are not needed. And back to structural steel, same thing. So that that's good, that's okay. And let's go and minimize our physics, minimize our material, minimize this multi physics here and let's go to mesh and let's go to our mesh toolbar or we can simply right click on mesh in our model builder and we need to go to boundary so let's come to more operations and where you have more operations let's go to edge so let's add an edge here okay and in here let's make some changes for the selection let's choose bars okay and let's right click on our edge and let's choose this distribution and for the number of elements, let's make some changes to that. So it should be 20 times mesh underscore par. Okay, and let's repeat the process. So we can right click on mesh. We can come to more operations and we can add a, a mapped and 
were mapped. Let's choose boundary one. So let's go to selection one, add, go back to our model builder, and let's right click on our mapped and let's add a distribution. And that should be six times mesh underscore par. Okay. And for the the boundary should be one, use control and select four. And let's add those two. And let's add a, a swept so we can come back to mesh in our model builder, right click and swept is here. You can select that. And for our swept, let's right click on it and let's select distribution. And here, let's put a number of elements. Let's make that 20 times mesh underscore par. Okay. And let's right click on mesh here and select build all. And if we go to our default, let's make this a little bit bigger for us to see. Your mesh should look like this. And once our mesh is completed, we'll go ahead and do our study. So we're going to kind of four studies. So let's jump over and get the first one set up. Let's minimize our mesh. Let's click on study and we're going to call this one without bars. So this is our first study. Okay. And it's always good to save. So let's go ahead and save our, our work before we conduct our study. So I've saved my work and let's go ahead and select under with our bars we have stationary let's select stationary and let's select the modify model configuration for study step let's select this box and let's go down to concrete so where we have linear elastic material we have concrete let's right click let's disable that also let's go down to trust let's click on that right click disable in model And also, let's go down to where we have our multi-physics coupling and we have embedded reinforcement. Let's select embedded reinforcement, right click, disable in model. Now let's scroll down to the bottom and we have study extensions. So let's expand that, scroll down even more. And here under study extensions, we have auxiliary sweep. So let's select that. And here we have add, let's select add. Here, let's choose, by clicking the arrow, let's choose one of our parameters that we set up earlier. So this one we have parameter used for parametric sweep. Let's select that. And for the range, let's enter that value. So you can pause the video and enter this range. And now let's go to our study toolbar. And let's click on show default solver.
and let's expand solution here let's expand stationary solver and now let's right click on parametric so we have parametric here and let's add a stop condition let's clear this box add warning let's clear that and for our stop condition let's click add and let's for the stop expression let's enter this value here okay make this bigger so you can see so enter this for your stop expression okay we are declared at warning before we compute let's go to add solution and let's select step after step and now we can go to our study toolbar and then make our first computation by hitting compute now our first computation is finished so let's go down to our results and our results we're gonna we're gonna add two mirror data sets to plot the entire beam so we'll, let's firstly let's close without bars as we already did that computation and let's focus on our data sets okay so let's right click on data sets let's go to more 3d data sets and let's add a mirror 3d and here for the plane so here we have the plane if you want let's close advanced if yours is extended you can close it just for clarity and for the plane let's choose z x planes and let's add another 3d mirror so let's go to results more data sets let's, let's select mirror 3d okay and for the x coordinate let's enter length divided by two and uh, let's go to stress so here let's select on stress let's change the name to stress one okay and let's clear the plot data edges let's clear that and for the data sets let's choose mirror 3d2 let's expand stress one let's click on surface and here for surface let's change the unit to megapascals okay and let's hit plot in our stress toolbar let's take off the, the grid let's go back to our 3d stress tool here and for the data sets let's choose mirror 3d1 let's hit plot okay and let's go back to stress surface mirror 3d1 mirror 3d2 so now that looks that looks good this is the way it should be let's do our second study but before we do that let's close data sets let's close stress one let's right click on stress one let's select group 
add, let's give it a name without bars. So that's our false results. And let's close that. Now let's go to our study toolbar and let's select add study and the general studies stationary add study here we can close this right here and let's go where we have study two let's click on stationary when well, it automatically went there so it's okay and now we're gonna make some changes to the modify mother configuration so let's select that right here and on the the linear elastic material we have concrete so let's right click and let's disable that as well and let's go down now to the bottom where we have study extension let's select auxiliary sweep and here let's click add and let's choose the parameter used for parametric sweep and our range we need to enter a range okay so you can enter this range now we are still in our study toolbar click on the show default solver let's expand solution tool okay and let's right click on stationary solver and let's choose fully coupled okay and let's go to parametric here let's right click on parametric let's add a stop condition let's clear add warning and let's click here add and let's enter a stop expression okay and now let's change the add solution from no to step after stop okay and let's give our study to a different name so let's go back to study to here and let's give it a name let's call that with bars and let's go to our study toolbar and let's run our second computation by hitting compute now that our second computation is finished we'll go down to results and make some similar adjustment as we we did before let's start by let's close with bars as that's finished we will focus on our results let's add a, a 3d mirror so let's go to our results so results toolbar let's focus on that more data sets 3d mirror okay here for this 3d mirror Let's change this from without bars to with bars solution too. And for the plane, let's change that to ZX. And for the Y coordinate, let's enter that value. And this will be the process. So more data sets, the mirror, add let's choose here for the data sets 3d well mirror 3d3 and for the x that should be length over 2 okay now let's go down to our we can let's first 
before we go down to the stress tool let's change let's collapse let's close this and let's go to stress here and let's call it stress tool okay now let's clear the plot data sets edges and let's expand this just to let's go to surface and let's change the unit to megapascal okay Let's go back up to stress two here, and for the data sets, let's change that to mirror three D four. Okay, so now let's hit plot, and let's go zoom to extends. Well, this is done now. So we have completed setting up our stress. Now let's go down to force here. So let's select this and let's give it a, a name. Let's call it force and bars two. Okay. And for the data sets. Let's choose mirror 3 4. Let's clear the plot data set edges. And let's expand force in bars too. And here we have line one. Let's click on line one. And we're going to make some changes here. So for the expression, we're going to enter this equation here for the expression so you can pause the video and enter this and for the, the color table so let's put, go down to coloring and style and for the color table we have wave let's change it to wave light that looks decent but let's take off the grid much better let's close our force and bars tool and let's click on stress trust and let's call it stress in bars tool okay and from the data sets Let's choose mirror 3D4. Let's clear the plot data sets edges. And on the this stress in bars tool, we have another line. Let's select the line. Let's change the units from Newton meter square to megapascal. And let's go down to the coloring style and for the color table let's select wave light if you like if you want you can leave yours as default but i'll choose wave light and i also select this checkbox for symmetrize color range and i'll go to default and I'll hit plot. Let's minimize stress in bars two. And now let's select stress two, use control embedded reinforcement, and also select force in bars two, stress in bars two, and you can hit control G on your keyboard. And we have created our second group and let's call that group 
with bars okay so in the label oops call this with bars okay and now we can close that so thus far we run our computation for with our bars we have our results for with our bars we run our computation for with bars and we have our results for with bars now let's go ahead and create our third study now let's add our study tree let's navigate to the study toolbar let's add study and general studies stationary add study let's close this now let's navigate to the stationary where it's there by default so let's navigate now to the study extensions and let's select auxiliary sweep and for the auxiliary sweep let's add parameter used for parametric sweep and our range that will be our range now let's navigate to our study toolbar once again and click show default solver let's expand solution tree let's right click on stationary solver and let's add fully coupled let's select parametric one and for parametric one from the predictor list let's change let's change it to constant we can do that by expanding continuation and let's scroll down a little bit so for predictor it's automatic let's change that to constant and let's now go back to parametric here right click stop condition and for the stop condition let's add that we have this for the stop expression okay and let's clear the add warning and step after stop for the add solution step after stop here let's call our study tree with bars on add to send so let's go back click on study tree and name it bars on add to, add to send also let's clear the generate default plots so here generate default plots let's clear that now let's navigate to our study toolbar and run our third computation Now that our competition is finished, let's close with bars and other send and let's focus on our results. Let's expand data sets just to see what's inside of it. So our last one was with bars and other send solution tree. Okay. So now let's right click on our data sets. Let's go to more 3D data sets and let's select mirror 3d so there we now have mirror 3d5 okay so let's go over to our data sets 
inside of our mirror 3D settings and let's select with bars and auto sense solution tree and for the plane let's select z x planes and for the y coordinate let's enter negative 1 to the negative 10 and let's add another mirror, mirror 3d so we can right click on data sets more 3d data sets and another mirror so now we have mirror 6 here 3d mirror 6 and for the, the x coordinate that will be length divided by 2 okay and uh, We now need to duplicate the plots from the previous study to compare the results with or without the failure behavior. Before we do that, for the data sets, we need to select mirror 3D5 here. Let's minimize data sets and where we have with bars here, remember we created a group with bars. Let's right click on that and let's duplicate that. And here is duplicated. Let's change the name to with bars and other sign. Let's expand that and let's manipulate these. So it's just 2.1. Let's call it stretch tree and for the data sets where we have mirror 3d4 let's call that mirror 3d6 and let's click last here and let's zoom the plot okay I like to take off the show grid. Now let's go down to force in bars to point one. Let's call that force in bars tree. Let's choose mirror three D six. Let's get the last one. Okay, default extends. Let's go down to stress in bars 2.1 and let's change that to stress in bars 3. And for the data sets, let's choose mirror 3D6 and click last. and we now need to add a plastic region let's go to our results toolbar and let's add a 3d plot group and let's call that plastic region let's change the data sets to mirror 3d6 and let's expand well we don't need to expand we need to right click on plastic region that we created and let's choose a surface and for the expression here so replace expression so let's click that here so make sure we have surface and then click here and let's go down to component one solid mechanics and let's go down to strain and 
to let's select this one solid dot epe equivalent plastic string double click on that and let's enter this here this expression here and for the color legend let's scroll down to that let's clear that and also let's go down to quality so let's expand quality and where we have resolution it's normal let's choose finer and for the smoothing let's choose none and the others can remain on default let's right click on surface and select the formation okay and let's navigate back to our plastic region so click here and let's take off plot data set edges and let's click last here plot last let's go to default so that concludes our with bars and percent results. Now let's go and we're going to manipulate our physics in order to add the failure of the material using a damage model. Let's close with bars and percent and let's navigate back up to our solid model so where we have our solid mechanics physics and let's click on the linear elastic material and now let's go to attributes on the physics so let's go to physics attributes and let's add damage Now let's navigate down to damage. So if your damage is closed, open it. And under damage model, we have scalar damage. Let's change that to Mesa's damage for concrete. Let's now go down to our tensile damage evolution. So we have tensile damage evolution and for the factor ng per era we need to enter to 20 joules per meter square here and for the compressive damage evaluation we also need to add some here, compressive strain threshold let's add one the e to the negative four and for the compressive damage evolution parameter let's add 1.12 So compressive damage evolution and we we'll ch we changed the compressive strain just hold and we also changed the compressive damage evolution parameter. For the equivalent strain, let's change that to modify masses or masers. Now let's navigate to the physics toolbar and let's go to global and here we need to select discretization 
and let's call that discretization linear so we'll put a comma between here and for the displacement field let's select linear now let's close solid mechanics and let's expand truss and let's go to global and let's add discretization and let's call it the same name discretization leader okay we made a error here and to cover that let's click here let's delete that yes so this one is okay we need to make sure solid mechanics is closed and we need to click on trust and now we can go to global and add our new discretization and give it the same name so we can now go to our material let's click concrete and where we have tensile strength let's enter two square brackets megapascals okay here and we'll now go and add our fourth study let's go to our study toolbar and let's select add study stationary add study since a linear shape order is used for the displacement the number of elements is increased by a factor of two using the mesh underscore power parameter so therefore we need to add a parametric sweep so let's close add study and let's click parametric sweep in our study toolbar let's click on add and let's scroll down here to mesh underscore power which is which is the mesh distribution multiplier and for the parameter value we have to enter two let's minimize our physics our material and also global definition parameters and also our component one let's focus on our study let's click stationary let's go to our physics and variables selection and under discretization let's choose discretization linear for both okay now let's go to our study extension and let's select auxiliary sweep let's scroll down let's click add and let's select our parameter used for parametric sweep and let's add our range Okay, so that's our range and let's go back to our model builder and uh, let's click mm -hmm. study four and let's clear the generate default plots and also let's give it its name so let's call this one with paths and damage now let's go to our study toolbar and let's add show default solver let's expand solution 4 let's expand stationary solver let's right click on stationary solver let's add fully coupled let's right click on parametric Let's add our stop condition. 
here you know stop condition is click add and let's add our stop expression okay and now let's change our add solution to step after stop and let's clear our add warning Now let's run our final computation. Now that our computation is completed, let's close with bars and damage. And let's focus on our results. Let's navigate to our results toolbar. Let's go to more data sets. Let's add mirror 3D. Let's add another one. So we, we have added two mirror 3Ds. Now let's go to the first one, mirror 3D7. And for data sets, let's choose with bars and damage parametric solution one. No, we don't need that one. We need with bars and damage solution four. Okay. And for the, the plane, we need the X C planes. And for the Y coordinates, we need to enter negative one the e to negative 10 okay and now let's go to mirror 3d8 and for the data sets let's add mirror 3d7 and for the, the x coordinate let's make that length over 2 okay now let's navigate down to our with bars so remember our group here with bars let's right click and duplicate and let's call that let's change the name of what we we've duplicated and call that with bars and damage Let's close data sets. Let's focus on with bars and damage. So let's expand that. Let's select stress 2.1. Let's call it stress 4. And for the data sets, let's select mirror 3D8. And for the surface, so let's expand stress 4. That surface for the replace expression. So let's scroll up here. Expression, let's click on that for the replace expression. Let's navigate to component one solid mechanics. Let's expand that and let's scroll down to damage. And under damage, let's go to solid that missed this one. Add me says stress damage newton meter square. Double click on that. Let's hit plot last and let's zoom to extends rock to default. That seems pretty okay. I like to take off the grid. Let's close stress four. And let's go to force in bars 2.1. Let's call that force in bars 4. Okay, let's choose data sets mirror 3D8. Let's hit the last plot. Okay. 
let's now navigate to stress in bars 2.1 let's call it stress in bars 4 and let's go to our data sets mirror 3d8 and let's let's hit the last plot okay let's navigate to our results toolbar and here we have 3d plot group let's select that and let's call it damage okay and let's choose for the data sets mirror 3d8 and let's right click on damage and let's add a surface let's go to expression let's go to components let's go down to solid mechanics and let's go to damage let's expand damage and let's just select solid that dmg damage double click on that and now let's go down to quality let's go down to quality here it is close you can open it by clicking the arrow and for the resolution let's change it from normal to no refinement and for the snowden let's change it to none let's right click on damage well under damage we have surface so let's right click on surface and let's select deformation let's go back up to damage here and let's clear plot data set edges and let's click plot loss let's go to default okay now let's create another cheat plot group so let's navigate to results and let's select the plot group and let's call this one cracks okay and for the data sets mirror 3d8 and let's clear the plot data edges let's right click on cracks and choose surface and for the surface let's go to expression at component one let's go to damage expand first we need to go to solid mechanics and then expand damage and then scroll down and let's look for the damage that eq equivalent strain double click on that Now in our expression, let's enter that expression. And for the coloring and style, we need to change it to grayscale. So coloring and style where we have our color table. So the color table where we have rainbow, let's scroll up and select grayscale okay and let's select reverse color table and let's go down to quality and where we have resolution no refinement and this mode in let's select none let's right click on our surface in under cracks and let's choose deformation let's close the damage let's navigate back to cracks here and let's select last and 
we will now go and create a, a deflection. So we're going to create some graphs. Let's create our deflection graph. So let's minimize cracks and minimize with bars and damage. Okay. Let's navigate to our results to bar. Let's click on one day cut group. It, it will expand with bars and damage because it falls, it will fall inside of that, but we don't want it inside there. So let's take it and let's drag it out and just put it just above export, you will see a tick blue line, just drop it there. And therefore, if we close with bars and damage now, you can see our 1D plot group 19 falls outside. And let's give it a name. Let's call it deflection. For the parameter selection, so data, we have parameter selection power. Let's choose last. Okay. And for the title, let's expand title and let's type, let's title type, let's change it to manual. And for the title, let's call it deflection of beam. Here, deflection of beam. And for the, the X axis label, let's select that, the Y axis label. Let's select that as well and let's enter some names for those. So for the X, let's call that position on X axis. So we enter that here. And for the Y, let's call that deflection millimeters. Okay. Now let's right click on deflection and let's select line graph for this line graph here we're in the line in the line graph settings let's navigate to our data sets and let's choose without bars solution one now let's come here but before we do that well, it doesn't matter as we as we are here let's stay here let's go to selection list let's click five add and go back to our model builder and for the parameter selection we need last okay for the y data axis here let's change the unit to millimeters so you can click the arrow and with millimeters and for the expression let's click here and we are going to make some changes so let's go to component one let's navigate down to solid mechanics now let's go over to displacement here let's expand that and we have here under displacement displacement field let's expand that and let's select this one displacement field this is the component double click on that and let's scroll down to our x axis data expand that expand our x-axis data and where we have our parameter list we need to choose expression let's scroll down so x data parameter choose expression by clicking here and for the, the expression let's put in a, a uppercase x and for the legend, let's go down to legends. Let's click show legends. And let's choose manual. And let's call that linear 
elastic model. That will be the name for that portion. Now let's right click on line graph one and let's select duplicate. Okay, so here we have line graph one with which created our first line. Our second line will fall on top of it until we change it because we duplicate it. So let's click line graph two and here without bars solution one for the data sets we know we now need to make that with bars solution two because that is our second solution and for the legend we need to give it the legend name linear elastic model with bars so let's scroll down here we have our, our legend and we have linear elastic model with bars, so that's the green line. A linear elastic model is the blue line, our curve. And we are going to repeat the process. So line one, right click, go down to duplicate. So line graph three, let's scroll up and let's select for the data sets with bars. An auto sense solution tree. So let's select that and let's go down to our legend and call that auto sense model with bars. So let's scroll down and here let's call it auto sense model with bars. Okay, and let's repeat the same process duplicate. Line one, so it's now line line graph four, and we will now click on with bars and damage solution four. Okay, and for the name, this will be Mesa's model with bars. Okay, with bars and damage, go down. Here for the legend. Okay. And now let's go back to deflection. Let's hit plot in our deflection toolbar. It's okay, so everything's set nicely. Now we need to add a plastic strain, a plastic strain graph, if you like. You can add some markers to these. We could have done that earlier. So if we select line graph one and we go to coloring and style, here we have marker. Let's just select cycle. Okay. And we'll repeat the process. Line graph two. Let's for marker cycle. And graph tree marker cycle and before we do the same thing cycle okay so there are many ways to apply other things to your your graph minimize this now let's create our plastic strain graph okay so let's go to our results toolbar and let's select 1D plot group and let's give it a name here, plastic strains. And now let's navigate to the, the data set. And now here we have parameter selection. Let's choose last. For the title, title type, manual. And let's call that plastic strain in bars. And for the X, so let's select these two boxes. For the X, let's call it position on X axis. And for the Y, let's call it plastic strains. So you can copy that. And for the Y. 
plastic strings. Now let's navigate down to I'll navigate back to plastic strings and let's right click and let's add a, a line graph and for the data sets let's select the second solution so it buys solution two and let's go to selection list and select 13 add and let's go to our expression in our y-axis data here and for the, the expression component one let's go down to solid well we don't need to go to solid mechanics the solid mechanics this time we need to go to trust and under trust we need to go to strain and under strain we need to select trust that epn plastic axial strain so double click on that and let's now navigate down to our x axis data and for the parameter let's choose expression and for the expression let's enter an uppercase x and for the units let's change that to millimeters and let's go down to show legends and for the legends let's change that from automatic to manual and let's call this first line linear elastic model with bars so let's enter that here we won't put any marker on on the on this graph so that's okay so if we hit plot here it's not correct as yet because we need to add other elements to it so let's right click on graph line graph one and select duplicate now let's go back up and let's choose with bars and auto send solution tree and for the legend let's go down and let's call it auto send model with bars we need to make a change here but we'll do that after let's just go ahead and apply what we need to apply for for this one so that's two and let's, we need to create another one so let's go ahead and create it by selecting the first one and hit duplicate now let's select here for let's scroll back up and for the data sets let's select the bars and damage solution four and for the parameter set pass let's go back to line graph two let's scroll up parameter set we have parameter selection for line graph two that should be last as well okay so line graph one this should be last as well okay and here we see the difference so for plastic strings let's go down and where we have our legend let's change this from upper right because as you can see it's blocking where our plot is 
and let's choose upper left so that's much better let's go back to line graph tree okay so for line graph tree we need to change the the name of the legend and that should be Mazel's moderate bars okay so on the plastic strings we have with bars solution one last okay we entered our title and here we have line graph one we have a manual legend so line graph one is actually the linear elastic model with bars and for the data sets with bar solution two last okay line graph two is the artisan model with bars okay and this data set should be with bars and artisan solution three and then graph three this is the mazars model with bars and this one should be with bars and damage solution four so you can go ahead and hit plot and zoom to extent if yours is not set make sure you hit plot and zoom to extent now we need to create another 1d plot group so let's close our plus exchange for now and let's go to our results and let's select 1d plot group and this one we will call this one load versus deflection okay and for the title manual and we will call that load versus deflection the title here now for the plot settings the x label the y label and for the the x label call it deflection and let's put mm in brackets for our units and for the the y let's enter this expression here should be actually actually be load and then it gives it the units for the load okay let's give that space and for the legend let's go down let's make our legend lower right because our plot which will be somewhere in this area so let's put our legend across here and for the the lines we will get the lines by right clicking on load versus deflection and we need to select global in, in this case and for the expression let's give that a negative load and for the units it should actually be kn meter square and for the description that should be linear elastic model okay now for the x data so let's go down we have our x data here for the parameter let's choose expression and for the expression let's enter negative in top one w and for the units let's select millimeters and let's go down to the color and style and we don't really need anything under coloring and style here so we can close that let's duplicate global one 
let's duplicate that and for the the data sets for global 2 would be with pass solution 2 okay let's go back to global 1 go up global 1 should be with pass solution 1 so in global 1 we should have with pass with our bars solution one, global two should be with bars solution two. Okay, so let's go back to global two and we need to change the description for global two here in our X, in our Y axis data. Okay, and let's repeat the process so let's go back to global one duplicate so now we have global three and let's change this to with bars and percent solution three and for the description we should have here to send model with bars and we need to create another one which should be the Mesa's model with bars so let's duplicate global one and this should be solution four which is with bars and damage solution four and for the description should have Mesa's model with bars Let's come to our results. Let's hit plot and let's zoom to extent. Now let's minimize our load versus deflection. Here is our plot. Before we go to our results, let's go back up to our model builder. So let's close the results for now and let's just focus on these so here let's select with our bars let's expand it let's click on stationary okay let's scroll up inside of our physics and variable selection let's go down to damage here and let's right click disable okay and let's go to with bars so let's close put our bars let's go with bars let's select stationary okay and let's select damage let's right click disable okay Let's close this and now with bars and artisan here, let's expand that, click stationary, okay, and select the modify model configuration for study steps right here and on the component one, solid mechanics linear elastic material here let's also disable this one the reason why we did this is because the damage only applies to our last study so in case you need to run this again if you don't disable this damage for the first three study it, it will give us a different computation it will give us a computation that includes a damage model okay so we only want it for the last one so let's minimize the pass on auto send now let's just run to what we we did so in our first computation we solve 
only the linear elastic problem in the concrete frame without the reinforced bars. Okay. Second study we solve with the reinforcement bars. In our third study, we solve the model with concrete plasticity and reinforcement bars. And our fourth computation, we solve the model with the Mesa's damage model and reinforce, reinforcement bars. For our results, let's expand our results and go through them quickly. So for without bars, let's expand that. Let's click on stress. This shows the Von Mises stress in a linear elastic beam. Let's close that one and let's select with bars and let's click stress. And this one shows the Van Mises stress in a linear elastic beam after we add the reinforcement bars. Let's go down to force in bars. And this actually shows the axial force in the reinforcement bars where we added a, an extra multiplier. We added such on the bars in the symmetry plane because we wanted to get the total force. Let's go down to stress in bars. And here we have the axial stress in the steel bars. Let's minimize with bars and go to with bars on Atosan. Let's expand that. Let's click on stress tree. Let's go to default and extends. And here we have the Van Mises stress in the reinforcement beam after adding the artisan criterion for the concrete. Let's also expand with bars and damage. And let's select under with bars and damage, let's select stress four. And this shows the Van Mises stress in reinforcement beams with Mesa's damage for the concrete. Let's select plastic region for, for the with bars and other sense. So let's select plastic region. And this plot shows the plastic region in concrete with other sense model. And let's go down to our with bars and damage. Let's click on damage. And this one shows the damage region in concrete with Mesa's damage model. Let's scroll down to cracks. And this shows the location of the cracks in Mesa's damage model. Now let's minimize with bars and after sign and also with bars and damage and let's click on deflection and here we have our deflection along the top surface of the beam due to the external load let's go down to our plastic strains and here we have a comparison of plastic strains along one of the rebars and let's click on load versus deflection. And this shows the, the load versus deflection for each concrete beam model. This concludes our simulation for the concrete beam with reinforcement bars. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. And bye for now.